All right, we're live. What's up, everybody? It is Steve Witchell, founder of Cover Band Central. How are you guys doing today? Today is January 21st, 2021, and it is 11 o'clock a.m. here in New Orleans Central Time. If it's not that time equivalent in your time zone, you're watching the replay, but it's going to be just as good. But if you're watching live, please say hello. Please ask questions for our guest today. He'll be happy to answer them. And we're streaming on StreamYard, but we're on Facebook, but I'm using StreamYard. So just let StreamYard allow them to show your name. Just click on that link so we can see your name, so we can dress you by name. Um, it is Thursday and Thursdays we like to do interviews. And this Thursday is no different. Um, when I started Cover Band Central many years ago, I knew that I would reach a lot of people, a lot of musicians and a lot of people in the industry, but it's not until I actually meet certain people that I realize the scope of this whole thing. It's, uh, it's incredible. The people that are out there, especially the people that are, have been doing things for a long time in this industry and are super talented. Um, today we're talking to Robert Lunty and he is part of the cover band central group. And that's how I, I met him uh, a while ago. And since we met in the group, we've talked on several occasions and he is a super cool guy, super stand up guy, hard worker and um, very thorough with what he does. And what does he do? You ask. He is a vocal coach and he's been doing this for a long time. Um, and I've seen some of his videos and I also was uh, uh, able to enter one of his programs and see all the stuff that he offers there. And it is incredible. The, the amount of information there, the amount of training in there, it's it's beyond my comprehension of how he was able to put all this stuff together for people who are singing and looking to improve their vocal health and just get better at singing. Uh, Robert studied with uh, a guy named Maestro David Kyle, who is from Seattle, Washington, has uh, passed away uh, about 15, 16 years ago. And uh, Maestro David Kyle, trained some people you might have heard of um chris cornell from soundgarden audio slave temple of the dog uh, jeff tate from queen's reich and wilson from heart so that's pretty good vocal company right there i mean if you're talking about vocalists who have made an impact in the industry i can't think of too many people that are better than those names so we're going to talk to robert he he studied with uh maestro david kyle and um, what he's done since um, Maestro passed away has basically taken the reins. He's basically the heir apparent as a vocal teacher, um, and he's run with it. I, I think probably even a little bit further than than Maestro went. So please feel free to ask your questions, and I will be asking questions too. And we'll also be offering a special discount for CBC people or anybody who's watching this video uh, for. Uh, any of his programs. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Robert Lunty, there he is. <laughs> busy busy at work writing something down, as always. <laughs> yeah, taking notes, taking notes. Huh? <laughs> Welcome to Cover Band Central, Robert. Welcome to the interview show. How are you doing today? Good to see you. I'm, I'm doing fantastic, and uh, it's good to see you too, Steve. Um, it's it's a thrill to to get in front of your huge, ginormous international tribe um, and an honor. So um, that's just fantastic. And thank you for inviting me. And I look forward to um, telling you guys and the tribe what it's all about in terms of vocal training to get to build the motor skills and your strength for singing better and um, how that all happens. But anyways. Yes, thanks, most people want to sing better, you know. Nobody wants to sing worse, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, uh, it's our honor to have you here. Um, but what I'd like to start with um, just your background. How did you get started singing? What was what was the impetus for, for what was the inspiration for you uh, to get started singing? And like, how old were you and what, you know, mm. what drove you? Okay, so the inspiration um, story is actually in um, the book. It says it opens up the book and it's called Take Hold of Flame. The little story is called Take Hold of Flame. Wow. I was 15 years old. I was living in Idaho, okay, at the time and in the middle of nowhere. And I had an AM clock radio on my waterbed. That's totally a true story. This is absolutely what happened. 
And I heard the opening, the opening glissando in vocal training. We call it like a sort of a siren, like a big screamy sliding, sliding going up. It's called a glissando. I heard the opening glissando from Jeff Tate from the uh, Queen's Reich EP, Queen of the Reich. Yes. I, by the way, I was singing in garage bands, okay? And I was a singer. I'm a, I've been doing that for years. So then, so I, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da and then, and and what? It goes all the way up. And I literally stood up. It's three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning. And I stood up in bed as a kid. And I go, and I thought to myself, what the flip was that? That was amazing. And I turned and I stared at the clock. And I thought, who is he? Who taught him? What's going on? I want a part of that. So then I started searching around and I went to Hit Parader. Remember Hit Parader? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, I was a big collector of that. Circuit, yeah, right. Hit Parader, Faces, all those magazines. I yeah, had every yeah. one of them. So I went to Hit Parader and there was an article on Queensryche in there. And they just happened to say, uh, taught by uh, Maestro David Kyle in Seattle, Washington. Da, da, da. But by the way, Maestro Kyle also taught Lance Daly from Allison Chain. Right, so, right, yes. Okay. So I'm reading this thing, and I'm like, I'm a go-getter. And I found a guy, and I and I got his phone number. He picked up the phone. I'll never forget it. Hello, Maestro Kyle. He's like very, very, <laughs> very flamboyant. I'm like, hi, um, I'm a terrified kid from Idaho. Um, is Jeff Tate your student? Yes, he is. Uh, 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 how much are lessons? Da, 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 da. <laughs> so off we went. And um, I spent uh, about uh, six years, my formidable training years, working with Maestro Kyle, flying from Idaho to Seattle, Washington by myself, training with him. And, and I just really was a jukebox hero kid. I just wanted that so bad and went after it. And that never really went away. So make a very long story short. And I've had other really great coaches that have influenced the pedagogy that you're your tribe might be able to train, you know, in our program. But, but make a long story short, I've sort of dedicated my life as a kid and even as an adult today to helping contemporary seniors learn how to bridge the vocal break so you're not choking and pushing and constricting and get to the head voice, <laughs> which for a lot of people is sort of a weak, windy falsetto position, and 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 make that a hard, uh, you know, sort of a tough, heroic beefy chest and in 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 our world in the training program we call this bridging and connecting so you bridge the vocal break to the head voice and then the real work really starts where we then begin to build the musculature and the motor skills and the tendons and the ligamentation and everything that's required to be able to belt in the head voice like all great singers really know how to do unless you're singing country all right so I dedicated my life to that, and we wrote a book, and we have eight courses that actually show people how to train to do that. That's great. Um, I, use, I I sing. I'm not a singer, but I, I sing in my band, uh, and I'll sing lead on some songs, and I sing harmonies and stuff. I have a good ear, so I, I can hit pitch pretty well. Um, and I'm a baritone, and I used to have a pretty good falsetto. I, I, I say pretty good, but it probably wasn't that good. But I used to be able to at least hit pitch in my falsetto, and I used to smoke too. I used to smoke cigarettes and I, I smoked for 25 years and I quit uh, about over four years ago now. Um, and w when I quit smoking, I, I, I could definitely tell that my range got better, um, but I lost my falsetto probably before I quit smoking. I just lost it. I just couldn't even figure out how to do it anymore. And I imagine if I went and studied with you that I would, I would get it back. I would figure out how to do it because, you know, you train well, things like that. Well, well, you would. I, I mean, I, I completely guarantee you. And the piece here, one of the things I would like your audience to take away from this, when anybody's watching this, and it's, you know, it's an important thing to sort of an aha moment about vocal training is that vocal training is an athletic endeavor. And I'm not trying right. to be it really is. It's, it's, it's repetition, it's motor skills, it's building the ligaments, the tendons, and the little mechanism, little muscles inside your, your, your larynx and the voice position and we call this the mechanism okay and and if you do the right workouts if you do the right training techniques specifically this not that that will help but if you specifically do this then um what happens is exactly what i'm talking about like i said i spent uh, 50 years trying to figure this thing out and we have so you can do that steve we can build it and it takes about 
depending upon the individual, if you follow the routine, um, uh, I, I, I tell everybody uh, 30 to 120 minutes per training session on the content, three to six days a week for approximately 90 days to experience amazing belching results if you really get after it. Right. So I would say that's akin to any sort of exercise. If you're trying to build muscle in your arms or, or whatever, you have to do this. It's repetition, I think, is, is what is the key, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and there's, 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 there's not a magic pill. There's not, um, you know, something it, it's, it's, it's sweat equity. Yeah. Right. And, and so sure. the routine, so it's sort of the program is kind of like a P 90 X for your voice. So the routines are, yeah, we're going to do this thing for 30 minutes. Then you're going to go do this other thing. And it's building these little muscles inside. It's super exciting to see the results that people get when they commit, when they actually, you know, you got to work, you got to, you know, it's it, sure. you your part, but your audience understands that. Yeah. And, and I've seen, I did a lot of research on this and I've seen a lot of reviews on people that have worked with you and have taken your program and, and they're all glowing. Like nobody has like anything bad to say, which is rare to find in, in anything, any, any sort of program that people sell. And they say things like that, like, you know, kind of reiterate what you said, just it, it's about the, the training. It's about learning the, the muscles and, and, and the, all the repetition. Um, so when, um, so you, you got in touch with Maestro, David Kyle, and you started training with him. Were, did you start performing in bands? Did you start performing in plays or anything like that? Or were you just learning how to sing? Oh, no. As, um, the, the, the catalyst for getting training was the need and the desire to be able to sing as like Jeff Tate, Steve Perry, Bruce Dickinson, and all these cats. I was, I'm a metal guy. And, and so, um, no, I was in bands. I've been in bands, uh, especially then when I was a kid. I was in a metal garage band. Yeah. And I was just totally into it. And as an adult, I've been in a few bands as well and done a lot of session work in the studio. Was that in Seattle or was that in Idaho that you were in bands? It would be in Seattle. In Seattle, so you were, so I, you're probably about the same age as me. So, yep. so that was, uh, were you in Seattle when that whole thing, then like '91, when the whole grunge thing started to happen? Uh, yep, that's just when I landed in Seattle. I graduated from the University of Miami uh, School of Music and Business, and uh, went to Seattle in '92. <sighs> okay, and it was all just like happening at that time. Um, so okay and so you were studying like actually in person with with maestro oh yes well prior to 92 in the late 80s i was working with him in person and then when i moved to seattle i worked with him in person right you said you were flying back and forth yeah, yeah. did you ever get to to uh to meet any of those people or like cornell or, or uh lane or yeah so um I, I met jeff tate in some clubs in in town he's sort of uh you know okay appears from time to time and I did pass Lane Staley in lessons from time to time. Uh, so I was at the end of my lesson. I was going out. Lane Staley is coming in. Um, just a quick introduction. And um, also, uh, uh, Terry Young from Rail. Your, uh, some of your cover band people might know who he is, but it was a, a sort of a big, comp a big con uh, band in, uh, in the Seattle area who, um, if you go, go out and listen to a band called Rail, he's a really great singer. But, okay. Yeah, there was a few moments, a few sightings, a few moments like that. Yeah. Right. See, when I think of uh, amazing singers, Cornell is definitely one that comes to mind, and Wilson for sure, um, and uh, and Jeff Tate definitely. Like I had, you know, a similar experience with the Queen's Right EP when that first came out. I was the same. Like, who the hell are these people? And they were playing it. I I grew up in New Jersey, and they were playing Queen of the Reich on uh, on. The, they had a metal show on Friday nights and they were playing that. I was like, who the hell is this band? And I went and got the EP, but I, I never had the, the, the drive to sing. That wasn't my thing. I, I ended up playing bass. Um, but when people think of Lane Staley, they don't think of him as like this amazing vocalist. However, I would say that he's, you know? he's, well, no, I mean, not compared to Chris Cornell or not compared to <laughs> Ann Wilson or Jeff Tate, because I would say, because he's not, he's the big, he's not the big belter. He's more of, you know, a stylistic singer. So, I mean, do you see the difference or, or is there a difference really in, in the way somebody is trained like Elaine Staley versus a, a Jeff Tate? Um, so they all, all of us meet you, these guys, all my students, we're all training the same routines, the same workout routines to build the motor skills and the strength. How you then apply it stylistically then becomes sort of a personal journey. 
Um, so this this sort of hits at another uh, myth about vocal training that and and a point of confusion that I'll take the opportunity this morning to help your people not be confused about. And that is that voice training can be is sort of all about style. Like I get emails, Robert, can you help me learn how to sing like Chris Cornell? Can you learn to, you know, can you, can you, can you teach me how to sing in the style of Frank Sinatra? And the answer is actually, yes, we can go down that path. There are certain elements and nuances with certain individuals and singers and styles that an experienced coach who's coached thousands of people can talk to and help you through. However, it's not really what this in the course is about. This is about working out, right? So and I'm just gonna challenge you a little bit, Steve. On Lane Staley is absolutely amazing. He is a, as you, I know you know that, but I'm just gonna say he is actually belting. It's a little bit raspy and uh, maybe a touch pushy, but he is belting in the head voice. And I always thought that the, and, but but is he, but is he, does he have sort of that clean, operatic -y Jeff Tate sort of vibe? Mm, no. So, so he's got more distortion in his voice where Jeff Tate is more sort of the, uh, sits in that Steve Perry clean group, all right? Right. In my opinion, Lane Staley, the thing, well, the, the thing that really sort of the signature Lane Staley-ism is his ear for melody, his ear for singing the black notes on, in his melodies. A lot of, a lot of minor, minor you know, thirds and, 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 and uh, uh, jazzy harmony, uh, um, uh, voicings in his melodies. And uh, yeah, he's a, a really a great blues soul singer. But yeah, man, I mean, he's got, you get, he trained. He trained to do that. And the yeah. story about Lane real quick is that when Lane was with Maestro Kyle, where he learned his, his fundamental training skills and his ability to bridge and connect initially, he was a glam guy. A lot of people don't know that. There's there were pictures, you know, like big hair, spandex. He was the glam dude, and then oh, yeah. and then he went on and did sort of more the grunge thing. Yeah. yeah, that was the thing of that time, like the where it kind of turned over from all the rock guys were into the because the late '80s that was the thing. It was the glam thing, and then everything changed, and everybody cut their hair, and and it was all of a sudden it was you know not not glam. I mean, that was probably the biggest. Uh, a change in in music in in the history of music where a sudden change i, I was working uh i worked at sam goody i was a retail store manager at the time in, in 91 and okay. and it was it was it was mind-blowing how quickly it just went from people buying skid row and tesla albums to nirvana and alice in chains and sound garden and, and pearl jam and that um Mm -hmm. but it was a renaissance but uh, but with lane like um jerry cantrell sang a lot in in alice and chains too he still does uh, and their voice is very similar did, did do you know if he studied with with uh with meister kyle too or did he uh, just yeah that's a, that's a good question he did he did okay he did yeah they have very similar voices and sometimes people can't even tell the difference that like like no that's jerry cantrell when they think it's lane um i got to see alice and chains live a bunch of times in fact i saw I was at the taping for uh, MTV Unplugged when they did Alice wow. Chains did it. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, it was really cool. It was the uh, first time I had ever seen like a TV show of a band taped live, and it was it was very exciting. If you see the video, uh, the the home video of that show, they they come out and they start and and they do a song and Lane screws up the lyrics, and he had a teleprompter right in front of him and he still screwed up the lyrics and he just yelled like Fuck. and and they stopped and then they did it again and i was thinking to myself well, okay well they're gonna cut that for the show and then when they showed the they showed the whole thing on the, on the home video it was pretty cool glad they did uh, yeah um so it, it, after you studied with him um how many years did you study with maestro kelly uh -huh. like yeah, off and on for about twelve years, and it's it's it's, it's years, right. yeah, it's relevant to also say that, and he's probably my biggest influence, and he was my first real serious coach. But I've worked with other people too to sort of round out my knowledge and expertise, which help influence the the program. And the program has, you know, some inspiration from Kyle and other mentors down the line that I worked with, and including some you know, original stuff that homie created that's, that's helping people. Okay, so, so what made you go from, you're, you're, you're learning how to sing properly, you're singing in bands, to I wanna teach everybody this. I, I wanna carry the reins 
you know, what was the impetus for that? Great question. Uh, I am in another life, uh, sort of a technology sales biz dev guy. I've done contracts with Microsoft and other things. And so I've back in when the internet was blowing up, I was decided to kind of go down that path of, um, you know, a grown up job, so to speak. And when the internet bubble popped, okay, and they were laying people off, this would have been in what, like around 2000 or in, in the late 90s, uh, some of you guys might re recall that. Um, uh, I was, you know, jobless. So still singing in bands, still passionate about singing and training. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna, mm, something I could do, I could teach. That's what I can do, I can teach. I do a little side, little side show, a little uh, a, you know, side gig, and I started teaching. I faked it, you know, the first couple of lessons, I sort of kind of did the Kyle stuff. And after about a year of that, what, ha what happened was I realized that because it began to grow and 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 people started referring other people and next thing i know uh you know one day turned into two and two days turned into three three days turned into a full week and there was a moment where i realized you know what being a voice coach wasn't really in my plan at all that's not what i set out to do um but because that seems to be what i'm really super good at i just have a knack for it and I think you do. I, yeah. I, I, I want to be honest. It's not. I'm not trying to be bragging. I'm sort of an idiot savant on voice training. I'm, I'm, I'm really good at it. And then, fortunately, I recognized that, and I quit the day job, and I went all in. I said, "Okay, universe, this is what I'll do." And I wrote the first version of this book. Became the first voice coach on YouTube to do lecture tutorials, which would have been like 25, 30 years ago and went after it and started making product and helping people and it just took off right I, I would definitely agree that you're good at it and and you certainly get into it and um you mean what you're saying and you mean what you're doing uh and anybody can see that even without signing up for your programs just go to youtube and, and search robert lunty and find some of his videos and uh you know you get into specific things that people can improve upon and yeah. i mean you're really into it you're 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 in, I, you're present is the word I would say when, you. when you're teaching. Um, but uh, you know, you just said about the universe and I, I want to just uh, bring this up cause I was looking at Maestro David Kyle's Facebook page and it says some stuff here about him kind of teaching metaphysically. Um, mm -hmm. And there are a couple quotes here that I really like. Um, he said, visualize you, uh, you are already what you want to be act as if you are that and you will become it. Um, and there's one more specifically here, uh, sing with your entire body. You don't have sex with only one part of your body. Do you? Well, some people do, I guess, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but how much of that was an influence to you and how much of, of that is a part of your teaching that sort of spiritual met metaphysical inspirational vibe? Cause that's something that that I that's a big part of my background and that's something that I really kind of implement into cover band central and especially like the uh, the podcast I do but how much is that a part of your thing um, that's a fantastic question uh, before I dive into that a little bit I just want to tell you that in the back of this book there's three pages of famous maestro Kyle quotes oh cool <laughs> <laughs> cool yeah, in the program he was sort of famous for these really neat anecdotes that was that was part of his shtick um, to, 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 to truly get results in my, it, you know, in, 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 to seeing, I want students to get practical, Steve. I, I tend to lean towards pragmatism. Here's the routine. Here's how you do it. This is, it's, don't sing through your porpoise nose, don't sing purple. This is exactly the routine. Get a keyboard, get a mic in your hand and start working out, all right? So I'm the guy that's, that they'll tell you is sort of practical and pragmatic and, and no bullshit with tough love. Now, when we get into um, uh, 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 sort of anecdotal type singing, that is something that I do engage in, but it's typically based on two things. One, believing in yourself, 
sure. removing elements of fear about singing. There's, there's, there's a, a lot of fear and it manifests itself in different ways regarding singing. And so that's a piece that me and my certified instructors will address because that's getting in the way. The other thing that sort of is sort of a heady idea that we get involved in is teaching students to not just train by clicking off the to-do list. Beginners will do that. You're like, okay, I did this, 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 and this, and this, and this, I'm done, but I'm not getting the results I want, or I'm still confused. And so we have to sort of step back and coach students that, that vocal training, even though there's sort of regiments in here, right? That vocal training isn't about checking off a to-do list for an hour. It's, right, right. it's there's that, that, I mean, there's that element in there, but what I really want them to do is to visualize to hear the sound color that they want, okay? To visualize, I'm gonna do an onset, I'm gonna do a, a scale, but before I go into it, create a picture. Visualize what that color will be. Will it be a little bit warm? Will it be brighter? And, and also, Steve, the kinesthetics of how will it feel? How will it feel? Will I feel the resonance shifted forward in my, in my oral cavity or back in my oral cavity? And, and when singers begin to transcend from checking off a to-do list and just doing stuff and, and get into really deep diving deep into he hearing and imagining the color that they want, then, then some really nice uh, levels of progress and maturity as a singer begin to take off. I love that idea of the visualization thing because that really helps. It really helps in all aspects of life. If you want to accomplish something, you really have to see it first, see what it looks like, and especially what you just said, feel it. What does it feel like? Because yes. that's that's the really that's the juice right there is is feeling. Um, we got a great question here from Pat. Pat O'Brien is a, a cover band central guy, and he has been doing live streams since the pandemic started. So he said, after 32 years of singing gigs five nights a week, I very suddenly and acutely lost my singing voice. No hoarseness, no laryngitis, no nodules, no pain. My head voice around C4 and above just stopped. Have you ever dealt with such a situation, Robert? Uh, of course, I deal with it every day. This is, um, Steve, I just want to tell you that, that you're not special. That's what people and singers have been dealing with for 400 years every single day. And that's in some sense why I'm here, all right? So yes, Steve, I'll tell you this. Don't worry. Well, if this isn't my question. So this is Pat's question. So I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I was. I, uh, uh, Pat, Pat, <laughs> Pat. Sorry, Pat. Pat. Rose is yeah. still Rose. Pat. Um, if you were able to bridge your vocal break around C4 and get into your head voice, and you felt like what you were doing up there was connected and beefy, and you, know, you could use it, that will come back. Most likely, that will come back and can come back. And actually, you're a really good candidate for somebody that that needs to dive into a program and, and, a, and a course and get the techniques to begin to build the motor skills and the movements required to get that back. It is possible and happens all the time that there's a certain amount of motor skills and strength and, and that are happening to make this happen for singers, even though they don't realize the mechanics as to how that's happening, that can then go away and then you create confusion. But if, but, but if you jump into the program, it'll come back for you. So Pat, I have good news for you. I think you're okay. You just need to do what, we're, what I'm talking about. Get, explore the feelings of your voice, what it feels like when you've, when you've released your voice. We call it, in, in my book, we call it releasing vowels, you release the voice into a configuration that I'm asking for in the program. When you do that, you go, oh, oh, okay, that's the way it's supposed to sound. That's the way it's supposed to feel. And what, what might happen, Pat, is you'll have a, a moment where it's like, oh, that's the way it used to feel as well. And so, so the tools in the program can help you get back to where you were. You're a good candidate for a train program. That's great. Pat is great. He, he's a, a big part of Curve Ed Central, and he's been doing – uh, as soon as the, the quarantine thing happened, he was jumping on doing live streams and, and uh, uh, he was doing them once in a while and then he started doing them very often. And he's got a great voice, he has a, a huge repertoire of, of songs that he knows. Uh, and uh, that's something that a lot of people did um, when this pandemic hit and bands, you know, 
nobody could play anywhere anymore. So a lot of people just started kind of singing online. Uh, do, do you have any, is there any sort of different approach you think for people uh, like singing in a loud club with live band uh, as opposed to singing at home, maybe singing along with tracks? Is, is there a different mentality? Um, yes, in the sense that make sure that you can hear yourselves, get some in-ear monitors and make sure that you can hear yourself. Um, now to prepare yourself for live and recording when you're training, train hard, train hard. Uh, a lot of what's happening in the program is really just resistance training, like going to the gym. So when you jump on to these routines that we have in my program, don't pussyfoot around, right? Once you feel like, you know, you got it and it's, and it's working properly, uh, 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 give it some inertia, work at it. Um, even if you're not sort of like a rock belter guy and you want sort of a nice soft voice and that's your gig, even if that's where you go when you're performing and recording, when you're training, uh, uh, go after resistance training because we, again, we need to get re uh, uh, results with the, with the mechanism and the tissue. Right. Um, and yeah, Pat said he's, he was, let me just put his comment up here. He said okay. he appreciates that. He said he would seriously consider the program. And Pat, just stay tuned uh, because we're going to give a, a special discount code for you and for anybody watching this video for any of Robert's programs. I did put a link to one of the programs in the description. You could click on that and check it out if you like. But uh, but stay tuned. We're going to uh, towards the end of this, we're going to give a special discount code. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, um, so so that's a, a, a good question too because. Uh, there's been a bunch of people that were working regularly, especially in my neck of the woods in uh, New Orleans, where people are a lot of full-time musicians. And yeah. then, you know, pandemic hit, quarantine, we're not working anymore. Um, is there any advice that you can give to singers who, because somebody did ask me this question about, well, I'm kind of losing my strength because I'm not out singing five nights a week now or, or three nights a week or whatever. And I'm yeah. just sitting at home. Uh, yeah. Is there any advice you give to people like that? And do you, I mean, do you think it makes a difference for one? Uh, is it something that you need to just keep exercising, even though you're not, I would imagine so, but you do, you do. Yeah. If you, if you, if you've, stop singing and and or stop training the routines and moving the mechanism in this exotic high performance way that we don't do when we're speaking then yeah it it, it gets a little bit weaker you know, coordination goes away a little bit it's like ice skating or swing dancing you have to practice and stay on top of it so if you're not out doing gigs these days then what's the next best thing you could do would be to make recordings right that's what i would do right and uh, and and I, I you know I highly recommend the live streaming thing. That's something that I was on top yeah. of as soon as uh, it hit because just just staying active uh, it really helps you psychologically e even uh, if if not only physically. Um, <clears throat> now uh, somebody just put this comment up and, and I'm not going to put it on the screen because uh, but um, there's a lot of people in this group and it, a part of Carbon Central that consider themselves veterans have been around for a long time. Yep. And, and don't feel like they have anything to learn. Um, I would say question A, A part of this question is, do you think veterans still have something that they can learn? And B, um, is there a trick to unlearning things that, that maybe people learn that are bad habits? Well, as I said, I'm a straight shooter. And so I'll just tell you, uh, the notion that veterans that have been doing it a long time don't have anything to learn is is absurd. It's just absurd. It's completely absurd. And it's wrong. Right. I, and I would say that most people don't think that. I, okay. You know. well, I'm just saying that if that's the question, the question is it's absurd and it's wrong. Uh, you do have a lot to learn. And in fact, the people that have been doing it a lot and already have a pretty good voice and happy with what they got, in some sense, those folks really get on board and accelerate quickly. That actually is a really good profile for somebody that could even benefit more from training because you do have some game. You do have some coordination already working for you. But. Right. Um, yeah, I would agree with that because, uh, you know, I've been a bass player for, for nearly four decades now. And if I had the opportunity to train with somebody who I felt like it could offer me something that I don't know, then I would absolutely do it. Um, and I know that they could, you know, if I had an opportunity to go train with Victor Wooten, I certainly would have some things to learn. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the way it is. It, it's, uh, I mean, music, being a musician, any any sort of musician is always a constant learning process. You're always growing, you're always changing. And and I would imagine with getting older that th there's certain things in your voice that change because, you know, older people tend to lose their higher range register, uh, but some don't. So is, is there something that you train people to? Um the, yeah, that. older people lose their register and their high register if they don't train, if they don't stay in shape. Right. So, 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 uh, the, so the the truth about that is that the vocal mechanism is the last organ in the body to fully mature. Okay. So everything is already matured, but in your twenties, it actually is still growing and still maturing. Um, the, the your your sweet spot um, the best age range generally speaking to get responsiveness and execution on the mechanism is in your 30s and in your 40s now if you're training and you're really healthy and you keep working you can take that well into your 50s of course and 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 even you know into the 60s now I think that when we get to the 70s and 80s, we're probably other things are happening, mental capacity, other extrinsic body coordinations and anchoring things that we need to assist the mechanism begin to deteriorate. And, and uh, you know, so that that probably it doesn't go on forever. But but if you're in your 30s and 40s and, and 50s, you really and you're training and you're in your you're, you're in shape. It won't go away. You'll be OK. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, because I see sing singers like Steven Tyler, who's in his 70s, who mm -hmm. can still hit the notes that he was hitting, you know, when he was 30. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jeff Tate, I, uh, I got to meet Jeff Tate, uh, let's say six or seven years ago here in New Orleans, because a buddy of mine was playing drums with him. And uh, it was the last time he did he did a, uh, a an Operation Mind Crime tour mm -hmm. by himself without Queensryche and, yeah. and uh, one of my favorite records of all time. Yeah, um, mind crime, and I was really watching Jeff sing and the way he did it, and it seemed like it almost seemed like he was really pushing less, and and you know holding the mic back a lot and really like pushing less to hit those high notes. Um, I noticed that with David Coverdale too. I saw White Snake, you know, about ten years ago, and same thing. It looked like he wasn't really straining to hit those notes at all. It almost looked like he was relaxed well and uh, another great example is bruce dickinson who's never saying better he's never saying better uh um that's because they are staying in shape and they're working the techniques there's a there's i'm gonna get a little bit techy here but it's a big litany of things but one of the most important things that you'll learn in the program that will help your audience to seem great even at a later stage in life and sort of be that experience is, is we, we train people how to put the larynx into what we call cry mode, right? It's a, it's, it's a thing, it's a position, it's a configuration of the voice box and the mechanism that we don't use when we speak. It is very similar to the position the voice goes into when we're emotionally sad and cry, that's where it gets its name from. And then what we do is we, we train you through techniques on how to access that that physical position in the vocal folds and in the voice um, in a different context to be able to get into the physical larynx position for crying, but not for being sad, but for amplifying high frequencies, all right, and, and singing. Now, I could go off on a tangent on this, but back to your point with these people, they are thinning out the vocal folds by engaging good, healthy cry mode configurations and putting in good good uh, uh you know good vowels good resonance positions can help you not be get fatigued if you kind of know where to sort of place the resonance in your upper vocal track um you know good monitors and other things but i just tell your audience if if you learn this cry mode technique you're like 50 percent there it is transformational um because it allows you to amplify high frequencies without pharyngeal constriction and without pushing, a lot, a lot of the pushing will go away. And it sounds really beautiful. It's sort of a silky warmth when we sing through cry mode. All great singers are doing that, even if they're not aware of it. That's cool. Um, Rebecca asked if this will be available, this video to watch later. 
She said she's at work. And I think that's the case for a lot of people here. Now they're at work, they can't watch live. And uh, the answer is yes, Rebecca, as soon as we're done here, um, it will be available for replay. We're gonna put it up on YouTube and Robert's also gonna share it with his, his whole crew. Rebecca is somebody I know here in New Orleans. She's a great singer and a great person. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that a lot of people in New Orleans here catch this. Um, this is a long comment. Uh, I'm trying to read it real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I got it now. Okay. Yeah, we'll put it up. Why not? Uh, Lynn agreed always to stuff to learn. Only, only, I only started at 50 to explore the possibility. 50 years old. So mm -hmm. thought you just sang. She, she didn't even realize. And she said she had some natural stuff, but understanding the process certainly helped get back into her head voice, which she was afraid of easily and back again. Yep. Singing with a garage band for three years. Um, well, well, did you'll get back to it, uh, Lynn? You know, when we're when we're through with this whole COVID stuff, everything will get back. Yeah. Um, so that's good. Uh, Ruth asked a question. She said, "How do you develop vibrato?" Ah, good question. Um, in the program, there's a there's a there's a set of lessons, a module in this large course that's called vocal effects. And inside that module, we will, I help you guys explore four different kinds of vocal distortion, vocal vibrato and the aural, all right? Um, so first of all, it's, it's covered in the program. And the way we do vibrato is, it, it happens two ways. One, there's some exotic physics involved with vibrato in regards to sound pressure levels, resonance in the upper vocal track. And so, so the physics of air pressure and resonance in a, in a, in a space, if it's, if you're singing well, if you're balanced, okay. And you're singing healthy and you're sort of in the zone. Sometimes a lot of you have experienced this vibrato would just sort of, but it sort of, sort of begin to flutter and turn on, uh, uh, naturally, uh, it, it, well, you weren't really trying to do that. So one way to get vibrato is to train and get a good balance between the respiration levels and the resonance in your mechanism with cry mode and all the stuff that I'm talking about today, okay? Now, the other way to develop vibrato is through some specific workouts where where we um, well, we do something sort of like uh, um, to, to uh, pre-recorded piano tracks, something that sort of goes like this. Hey, 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 boom, boom, then we go up a good chromatic step and then we do it again, we got, hey, 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 so I'm just demonstrating for you a little bit about what the specific vibrato workout is in the program. You notice that what I'm doing is I'm developing oscillations artificially through, through my diaphragm, okay, it's sort of a, and so by developing artificially, the, the oscillation through this workout, it begins to sort of kickstart vibrato for uh, for your voice, okay? And that's, cool. so that's the one we kind of get. So you can build it and turn it on. You can control it and turn it on, which is what we want to do. But it also sometimes just flutters um, naturally when you have good balance between the acoustics, sound pressure levels. And, and, I, and I imagine that training is part of at least one of your programs, if probably not part of a couple of them. It's in it's in the four pillars of singing, the bigger okay. flagship course where we do a deep dive on these vocal effects. Um, okay. On the belting and the head voice course, it's not in there because I uh, because the belting and the head voice is specifically designed to be focused only on belting in the head voice. So we're we're gonna offer you guys a great deal on both courses. Uh, four pillars of singing is sort of the big flagship course that's been sold for years, and then there's a more recent one that's about belting in the head voice and expanding your range. Um, so right. And, and TFPOS. That's cool. Uh, uh, Gavin said he purchased the Ken Tamplin package, but had a lot of confusion with it. He yeah. said he'd spoken to you previously and still looking to get into your program. He believes uh, that you explain things in a way which uh, people can understand. So uh, he is appreciating that. So uh, cheers to you, Gavin. Um, I don't know how to say this name, Euro Gerg. Uh, she said she's pitchy and 60, uh, and it might be a he, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, would your program help somebody? And that's a good question. Uh, do, do you think that people sort of have a natural knack for uh, for matching pitch? Is that so, something that can be taught to people? Um, some people have a, a natural knack for pitch above and beyond others. 
And yes, it can be taught. For sure it can be taught. You can train it. Just the act of working on our onsets, which is just tuning the motor skills one note at a time, which is sort of what you would do early on in the program. Working on the onsets, matching the, the, matching the pitch is one of the things we're doing when we do individual onsets. And of course, working on the, uh, on the scales, which begin to move through uh, you know, melodic patterns. Just, just training will, will, will tune your ear. And I've also found that one of the best things you can do to just sing better on pitch is pay more attention. Uh, it works for me oftentimes. Just simply pay more attention. Oftentimes singers aren't focusing and listening to matching the pitch well enough to match it. Why? Because they're playing an instrument or they're having fun or they're, they're sort of, you know, lost in the, the experience of it all that can happen. But I encourage you to, um, yeah, to just sort of have a situational awareness about frequency and pitch when you're singing and it'll instantly get a little bit better for most people. Right. I, and I'm glad you said that. That was a question that somebody brought up too about playing an instrument and singing. Is, mm -hmm. is there a different uh, sort of technique that you need to show people to kind of, you know, get that thing going or, you know, doing well, the two things at once? Well, I'm not a, I'm not a, 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 I don't, I mean, I play guitar, but it's not at any level that is by, by the standards of your, of your crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm all about singing. Um, there is, there's nothing in the program that specifically addresses how to address the, you know, execute the techniques that you learned in the program and sing better while playing bass. Uh, that's not, not, that's, it wouldn't be my, my, my wheelhouse. Um, but if you're training and you're building motor skills and you're building good habits and good coordination, it will come, it will be there for you when you're playing. Right. I find it easier for myself at, you know, when singing on stage to have an instrument. And maybe it's because of the comfort level of, of having that instrument sort of to protect me. I mean, cause when I first, the first time I sang on stage, I was petrified. I would, and, and that's something, and you mentioned it before uh, about being, about confidence and about fear, you know, that a fear I think stops a lot of people from even pursuing things like this. And I mean, I took, I took vocal lessons when I was in my early twenties and I took about four of them. Um, and I would just couldn't relax. I, I just, and it was a female teacher and she would even get behind me and rub my shoulders to, to try to get me to relax. I was just so nervous about singing in front of people. And then I just kept doing it and doing it. And then eventually I wasn't nervous anymore. Um, is there something that you do to help people get over their fear? Or, or is it just about repetition and, and the best way to get over fear is repetition. Right. And, and begin to hear yourself sounding and feeling better about the notes. That's the best way. Another yeah. way to get over fear is feedback from the band, family, and all those folks, which again, isn't going to happen if you're not putting in 3,220 minutes per session, three to six days a week for at least 90 days. Uh, now, in the beginning, okay, I'm just started. I don't have the benefit of, of the long road and a lot of flat hours. I'm going to commit to that, but I'm not there yet. I'm terrified. <sighs> Make a big deal about finding privacy when you're training voice, when you're working on working out. So those of you that want to do this and you're sort of terrified, one of the first things that you'll learn in the program, it's literally in the first lesson out of 180 lessons, is get some privacy. You have to build sort of your training space for voice, okay? Right. And you can get privacy from different ways. Um, and, and there's a list of suggestions of things that you can do, but you know, the attic, the basement, the, 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 the bathroom, the, the, um, the bathroom, actually the bathroom has nice ambience. It's not a bad place to practice, it's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. Um, jam rehearsal space down, down the road, uh, YMCA, uh, give the people at the church five bucks a week to go in and get a space. There's all kinds of really cool creative ideas to get some privacy when you're training. You have to have privacy, all right? so, especially as a beginner. All right? And um, I, I think this is a good opportunity to point out that in the program with my students and in the video demonstrations that you see in the program, you'll see me using a mic. 
I train with live amplification, okay? Um, we put a little touch of reverb on it, not too much, but it's important that you train with live amplification. Um, okay. You know, the tools of the trade, uh, mic proximity, all that, all that. But, but the main reason, the main ben benefit of training with some amplification, just plug it into a karaoke amp or something simple, is simply this. It makes training more fun. There you it's go. Fun, man. That's it's not the main thing. One main reason why we're doing this, but it's it's in there. It's like in the top five reasons of why we're doing this because we get to work with microphones and we get to sound, you know, heroic and godlike through the through the technology. So to keep you from washing out, to keep it sort of fun and exciting when you're training. Get a get an amp, get a microphone. A lot of you guys already have that stuff, and be sure to go through the routines with amplification, which is one of the reasons why we need privacy because they're going to be making some noise. Right. I like that. Yeah. I like that 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 suggestion. Have fun. If you're not having fun, what the hell are you doing in the first place, right? Yeah. So you might as well make learning fun. A lot of singing. A lot of people that have taken voice lessons. And I'll guarantee you, and and, and I, I get the sense of they'll probably be green with me in this moment. The reasons, one of the reasons why you washed out is because when you went to the lesson and then you came back to sort of practice the things you were supposed to practice, you, didn't have, you weren't amplified. You were standing in a dead, non-ambient room with carpet doing scales and workouts. How fun is that? Frankly, mm -hmm. that's awful. That to me, having done this for a, a, a lifetime, that's, I would never do that. I mean, if it weren't for a microphone and some big heroic amplification and just a touch of sauce, I wouldn't be doing this, you know? Right. So, so it's a, actually a big deal. Make sure you do that. Yeah, that's great advice. Because um, uh, people, a lot of people that want to start singing are trying to emulate their heroes, like you wanted to do with Jeff Tate. And, you know, those heroes are on stage with a microphone and they're doing their rock poses and, and all that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, that's great advice. Um, uh, that's okay. That I mean, Lynn just said what she does. She said, uh, kids online schooling, husband working. She has a monitor in ears and a uh, heater and air conditioning. Yep. That's where she goes to rock at. Also you. record herself. You have your space. Good for you. There you go. That's great advice. Um, all right. Show that book again, Robert. I, I want people to see. What you got there? Uh, four pillars of singing. It's like an encyclopedia. Yeah, um, it's kind of ridiculous how big that book is. And it's a full color, six hundred sixteen pages. Um, all the technique and the methodology is is introduced through the white pages here, um, and then the red pages are tra are uh, uh, training routines. Um, there you go. And we got all kinds of you know beautiful color training graphics and and sirens and stuff in here. I mean, this thing took me about five years to write. Uh, okay. um, yep, that's it. And you said you got some uh, Meister David Kyle quotes in there too. At the end. Yep, yeah. uh, in the end, at the at the end of this, there was a, a Maestro Kyle wrote a, a really cool, um, um, sort of like an article or, or, or philosophy piece that was about four pages long about singing and um, had a lot of anecdotal stuff. And one day in Seattle, Washington, one of my students walked in with this thing. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's like, it's like rare and go like, where'd you get that? It's like, oh, well, I've had it for years. Ever since I took lessons with Maestro, I thought you'd be interested. I'm like, yeah, I'm interested. In that. Give me a copy of that sucker. Cause I'm going to put it in the book. So right. I put it in the back of the book and, um, yeah, that's just a sort of a bonus cool thing that's in there. Do you have any favorites, any favorite quotes from him? From Maestro Kyle, sure, uh, we can do this all day long. But uh, uh, what comes to the top of your head? Off the top of my head is is um, students will say, "Well, when when am I done with this? When 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 do I get a stop training?" When are the Maestro Kyle will say, and I and I share, I pass this on every day. Um, the day you think you're done, you're done. There you go. Okay, here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Uh, Lynn asked, is the book only available if you sign up for the course? <laughs> um, you, but you can buy the book separately, I would imagine, right? Yeah. So um, the code that we're going to give you guys, I set it up so that you can purchase the, the courses, the digital content by itself. And there's also an opportunity to purchase the, purchase the digital content, the courses with 
the hard copy book, which by the way, also comes with an, with a PDF ebook e as well. So you get the, you get this old school and you get a PDF. So the short answer is, yeah, the course, you can get the course without book or with book. And then the next question is going to come as well, then do I have to have the book? Um, you have to have the courses. You have to have the digital course. You don't have to have the book, but the book is a, as Steve was saying, it's sort of a reference manual that is complementary to the courses. There's graphics and anatomical charts and workout routines and storytelling and all kinds of things in the book that make it totally cool. And typically people, people that buy the book come back and say, I'm glad I got the book because now I understand your language. I understand the, uh, you know, the talk track in the videos because I read the book, I understand what I'm hearing in the videos better. So gotcha. I you can um, all right. So let's show that code. Um, Right here on the screen, that's your discount code CBC17, CBC17. Uh, and this code is going to be good for any of Robert's programs. I did put a link in the description here. You can click on that link and it will bring you to, I think it's, uh, I think it's the head voice program that I put in there. But it, if you click on that link, you'll find any, all, any and all of Robert's programs and you can use this code for any and all. And that will give you 17% off, which yep. is, uh, which is awesome. Um, I, I know people are having a hard time nowadays with uh, struggling because of the pandemic and not working. So we're happy to offer this discount for you to 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 help improve your singing and give you something to do too. Uh, you know, I mean, how amazing is that? If like you go, you know, you haven't played for a long time, and then you start really training, and then you come back, and people be like, "Whoa, yeah, you've been practicing, huh?" You know. It, that's, exactly. that's a great, great feeling to have. Uh, and uh, I like to add also that my team and I have, imp uh, have installed a really cool customer service chat system, like down in the right hand corner. So after you purchase, if you have questions about, you know, logging in or where do I start, or where do I go or whatever, just just let me know that you came from Steve's show and 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 use that customer service little chat system. And then myself or my team members will go in and answer questions for you, get you the links and the things you need. So we're going to we're going to support you. All right, we're going to make sure that you get off to a good start. Yeah, and you have a Facebook group with a large community too, right. so people will be able to join that. Um, and your website is thevocaliststudio.com if people want to just go directly there and peruse through all your goodies. Um, and speaking of goodies, somebody asked you, um, how many microphones do you currently have? As he knows, you are an avid collector. And, and Robert and I were just talking about this before we went live. <laughs> you see me light up on that. <laughs> I just, I, I, uh, um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a mic geek. I absolutely, it, I, it's, 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 I just love microphones. I love the instructional design, the different sounds and stuff. So the answer, the short answer is, I'm um, looking at uh, two Gator bags on the floor over here. They are twelve. There's twenty four there. There's another, probably twelve in my closet. These are handheld dynamic and condenser mics. A lot of them are vintage mics. So I, 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 I sort of hunt through the internet and find vintage mics. In regards to big diaphragm mics, um, on the other side of the closet over here, probably about eight big diaphragm microphones for recording. There you go. Gobs of mics. Would you guys like a mic recommendation? Um, Christian asks, ships to Germany. So I would imagine he's referring to your book. Um, yep. I would imagine you ship worldwide, yeah? Yep, yep. Anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. And his programs are online, so it doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you sign up for a program, you can uh, you get uh, access to it on the internet. And shipping is free. And shipping is free. Look at that. That's a great day. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we'll wrap this up. You can hang out, but uh, I'll wrap up the show. But Robert, thank you so much for being a part of this thing here on Thursday and for being a part of Cover Band Central. It's guys like you that really make me uh, proud to have started this thing and, and um, to be able to introduce you to other people and, and vice versa. So um, I really appreciate it. Um, uh, come back next Thursday, guys. Cover Band Central will have another interview. And as always, CoverBandCentral.com. You can go sign up for a profile for you, your band, or both. It is free. And there's lots of goodies on the site, too. Um, once again, thank you, Robert. We'll see you guys. Soon. Welcome. My honor.